Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with our Battle Group Boot Camp. In this video, we're going to be working on movement. Uh, in the first couple of videos, we got an introduction to Battle Group, just a general overview. Then we talked about the turn and the orders, how to issue orders, what orders were available. And in this video, we're going to continue on with the next chapter, which is movement. Okay, now every unit in the Game of Battle group has its own movement allowance. Uh, infantry have movement, cavalry, bicycles, horse-drawn, towed guns, manhandled guns, tanks, vehicles. They each have their own individual movement allowance. Uh, this can be adjusted based on what you're moving over, what you're moving through, etc. And that's what we're going to be going over. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about infantry. Infantry... Uh, they're basically small, nimble, compared to tanks, and can quickly find their way around, over, or through obstacles that would impede vehicles. So, an infantry, so infantry can always move five inches. Okay, it can always move five inches, uh, and this is not affected by any movement modifier unless it's dangerous terrain. So things like hedges and bocage and uh, streams or small rivers, roads, bridges, uh, wooded areas, things like that do not slow infantry. They always move five inches. So it doesn't matter if he's moving down a road or if he's moving cross country, it doesn't matter. Now, when uh, infantry are individually based, they have to stay within one inch of each other. Uh, so you could have a string of infantry uh, one inch apart, but I think that's more for the larger games like the 20 millimeter games. Uh, I play with 15 millimeter miniatures, uh, multi-based on uh, multi-bases like this, and I think one inch is being a little bit too liberal with the gap in a 15 millimeter squad. So I would say maybe the two squads need to stay within about a half an inch of each other. Uh, to basically help you as the player and and your opponent identify what are squads. Uh, this is a unit. If this unit was far enough apart, I would say these were two separate units. But because they're together, it helps identify that is one squad. That was my own personal interjection. The rules say... The infantry have to stay within one inch of each other. Uh, now, originally, the game is designed for individually mounted units, but like I said, I don't individually mount 15 millimeter models. Okay, the next one is cavalry movement. And yes, in World War II, they still used horses. Horses are fast, sometimes very fast, but they can't get into the places infantry can. A cavalry unit can move up to 8 inches. This is increased to 10 inches if it's on a road. Because roads are generally flat and provide decent footing. So once per game... A cavalry unit can make a special charge move. This allows the unit to increase its speed to 12 inches for that turn. But once it is charged, it cannot charge again. 
and cavalry units are affected by difficult ground, obstacles, and dangerous ground. So it might be wise to mark your cavalry units with a token or a something, a pipe cleaner or something. Uh, sometimes I'll use pipe cleaners like this to, to mark certain effects on a unit. Uh, or sometimes I'll use red ones. Uh, it just depends on the scenario, the situation. Uh, but I might mark a unit uh, that has not charged. And that way, once it's charged, I would pull that token off knowing that it's expended that charge. Uh, instead, you could do it in reverse where you can wait until someone charges and then mark him. Uh, I prefer to take it off because it cleans the table up. By adding it, you're basically um, adding more tokens to the table. That's, that's my philosophy. All right, now the next one is horse-toed guns and horse and cart or horse, horse and wagon. Uh, not as fast or nimble as cavalry, a horse-toed gun or horse-toed cart, usually a supply unit, can move up to four inches off the road and six inches on the road. They are affected by difficult ground, obstacles, and dangerous ground. Of course. All right, the next one is bicycles. Yes, the Germans even liked to equip equip whole battalions with bicycles, specifically in the Ardennes, to uh, move battalions around. Uh, it's faster than walking, and you can carry more gear. Uh, some units were equipped with bicycles to speed their movement to combat, not to fight on. Obviously, you're not going to, like, pedal and shoot a rifle. Uh, a bicycle unit can move up to three inches off-road. It's kind of slow. But this is increased to 10 inches while on a road. So if you're moving on a road with a bicycle, you're cruising. But if you're off-road on a bicycle, it's three inches. And remember, infantry without a bicycle move five inches. Okay, man handling a gun. Unfortunately, I don't have any... Uh, painted anti-tank guns or howitzers or anything like that. Um, but basically, if you take a anti-tank gun, a, a howitzer, or anything like that, uh, so guns without towing vehicles or a horse have to be pushed by the crew. This is hard, slow work. How far the gun can be moved is determined by the size, the size of the gun. Uh, and they list them as very light, light, medium, and heavy. Uh, and then they have, they have a table here. Uh, very light is three, on the road is four, light is two and three, Medium is one and two, and heavy is, can't move them. They're too slow, too heavy. All right, now we have vehicles. In the vehicle's profile, you'll find it is rated for two movement distances, off-road and on-road. So this is basically the distance it can move depending on where it is. And you can only use the road value if you start and remain on the road for your entire move. So if you're cross-country for any portion of it, you have to use your cross-country movement. But if you start on a road and you finish on a road, you can use your road movement. All right, so now I personally have these battle group data cards uh, and sp specifically to make uh, movement and shooting a lot easier. So if I was to 
pull out the Germans and I pull out I don't know what's a good what's a good vehicle how about a panther if I pull out the panther card right I'm looking at the pit well you can't see any of that pulling out the panther card the panther G the A or G has an off-road of 10 and an on-road of 14 Okay, where if we look at, I don't know, a Stug 3 has an 8 and a 12. Let's look at some fast movers, like maybe a 233. That's got an 8, but then it jumps to 24. The half track, 251-1, is 12 and 16. So yeah, every vehicle's got something different. So in general speaking, as we might have noticed with those comments, that wheeled vehicles move very fast on the road, but once they go off-road, they slow down considerably, where tracked vehicles are more in the general median. All right, and the last one is aircraft. I need to build a flight stand for this so that it would so it would sit up here like this um, above the battlefield. That's what I plan to do. But uh, aircraft are, of course, very fast. An aircraft has no movement distance. Instead, it can move anywhere on the tabletop. How do you like that? <laughs> All right. All right, so... Let's recap the movement of troops. We have infantry can move five inches. And they have to stay within an inch of each other. But in my game, they have to stay less than an inch, more like more closer to a half inch. Cavalry has an eight inch or a ten inch on the road. Toad guns, horse, let me rephrase that, horse toad guns are four off the road and six on the road. Then you got bicycles, which are three off road and ten on the road. Manhandled guns is based on the size of the gun. You have very light, light, medium, and heavy. You have vehicles that have their own movement values. And then you have aircraft, which just move all over the place. Now, you might want to notice that I now we talked about horse-toed guns. But when you start talking about uh, vehicle motorized toed guns, uh, it's based on the vehicle that is doing the towing. Uh, and I don't think it's affected. I think it just moves like it's normally moving. It just the, the towed gun just moves along behind it. All right, so we've got the movement in inches that most units have and how it's broken down. But now let's look at the effect modifiers like difficult ground, obstacles, dangerous ground, impassable terrain, etc. Okay, difficult ground is usually things like wooded areas, piles of rocks, marshes, broken rocky ground, rubble, stuff like that. Okay, remember that difficult ground does not slow infantry down at all. They will always have their five inches of movement. But when it comes to the vehicles, the horses, bicycles, manhandled guns, you roll a die, and you subtract that from the number of inches that it can move when moving through difficult terrain. So let's say we've got a Sherman that can move eight inches cross country. And then you roll a die because he's moving through woods. And I roll a four, let's say. Now he can only move four inches cross country. 
Uh, but I did a double move, so I do another die, and I roll a 2. So this 4 off of the 8 leaves him with 4, and this 2 off of the 8 leaves him with 6. So his total move would be 10, because that would be the difficult ground. And that's the way it's done for all vehicles uh, moving through difficult terrain. Infantry unaffected. Now we go to obstacles. Obstacles are things like hedges, fences, walls, bocage, small streams. That would be considered an obstacle. Again, infantry is not affected by obstacles. They can always move five inches. I'm reiterating that. They can always move five inches. But if a vehicle needs to cross uh, over a hedge, let's say, it's done exactly the same way as difficult terrain. But in this case, um, okay, let's say, let's say I've got uh, a tank right here, and he wants to cross this hedge, right? He's got eight inches of movement. And then he rolls, let's say he rolls something crazy high, like a six, right? Normally, he would only be able to move two inches, but because he hasn't encountered the hedge yet, he can still move all the way up to the hedge as long as it's less than eight inches. And then he would have to use a second move to cross it. And uh, you also roll a die to reduce off of your eight inches. So in this case, I rolled a one. He can move, what, seven inches? Okay. Okay, the way it's worded is... Uh, not exactly the way I explained it. Um, this was this was this is something I had to wrap my head around. It says if you redu if the reduction means the unit does not have enough to cross the hedge, move it up to the hedge instead. That's kind of vague. Um, But the way I explained it is, you roll the die. If the reduction doesn't allow you to cross the hedge, but you still have enough move to get to the hedge, because, because if you're back here and you roll a big enough number, you might have only two inches of movement. And you go, but then you never even touch the hedge. So why would that even reduce your movement? It shouldn't. So you still get your full movement until you get to the hedge, and then the reduction happens. All right, the next one is dangerous ground. Okay, dangerous ground. That's if you have to move over barbed wire or through a minefield, uh, across scree slopes, um, Flooded areas. Okay, so it's done a little bit differently. And dangerous ground affects infantry as well. So dangerous ground is one of the terrain types that will affect an infantry. And instead of reducing your movement by a die, you replace your movement by the die. So it can only move a D6. The D6 result cannot exceed the unit's normal maximum speed. So if I rolled a 6 for a tank, if it had a max speed of 8, then that's okay because that doesn't exceed its movement. But if a Jeep had a 4-inch cross-country and I rolled a 6, it's, it cannot move more than four inches. So it still couldn't move more than its 
max allowance. Same thing with infantry. Infantry has a 5. If I roll a 6, it's reduced. It stays at 5. It doesn't like get an extra burst of speed. Now, dangerous ground, depending on the type of dangerous ground it is, a roll of a 6 might also have an additional effect like mines might go off. Um, in a battle that I'm going to be running this year at Nashcon, <clears throat> uh, there is some dangerous ground. It's a flooded area. If infantry moves through this flooded area and you roll a six, then your squad takes a D3 casualties because they drowned. So it just depends on the scenario and... Uh, the type of dangerous ground it is. And we'll be getting into that later. Impassable terrain. There, there are places you just can't go. Like big rivers, cliffs, uh, the beach, I don't know, the ocean, you know, or a lake, or something like that. Uh, if you move a unit into impassable terrain the unit is destroyed. So don't do that. Now, some units have special rules that allow them to enter impassable terrain, like a swim wagon or a Sherman DD. Amphibious units are the most common. Okay, <clears throat> that's kind of like the terrain modifiers. Now, there is reversing. So let's say you've got a tank and you want it to back up instead of go forward. Right. Um, one reason why you would want to back up is because you want to present your front armor to your opponent uh, while moving away. Sometimes, uh, remember in orders, you can issue an ambush, maybe to an anti-tank gun, so that if I decide to turn and drive this way, he could ambush me at any time during my movement. So he could hit me in my side or in my rear, and I don't want that, so I would reverse. So now, if you are, redu if you are reversing in difficult ground or across an obstacle, you roll a die for reversing, but you roll another die for the difficult ground, so you would actually be reducing your movement by two dice. There is one more type of terrain, and that is the building. In order to enter a building, an infantry unit must move to where the majority of the unit is within one inch of the building. Let's say that was the squad, right? It has 10 guys in it, and six of them were actually able to get within one inch of the building, but these guys are two inches away from the building, but still part of the squad. As long as the majority of the unit is within one inch of the building, then they can immediately be placed inside the building. So in this case, I would just pop the roof off, pick these, pick everybody up. I would just drop them inside. You know, uh, I might even put somebody upstairs just to say that everybody is inside the building. All right, now in order to exit the building, an infantry unit takes half of its basic move, which is two and a half inches, measured from the building model. So, if it was trying to move out, I would... Let's say I was trying to move this way. I would just lay my inches down, pick these guys up. Looks like two and a half would be right there. Boom. Two and a 
two and a half. And don't forget the guy upstairs. They can move out two and a half inches. Or I could put this guy over here or wherever. And that would be one of its two moves. And then on its second move, it would just move five inches. All right, now the next step is vehicle passengers. Uh, a transport vehicle carrying passengers moves and fights as normal, and when they move, any passengers are naturally carried with them. Once any passengers have disembarked, the vehicle, the disembarked squad or squads, become separate units and must then be given orders individually until the passenger re-embarks. Okay, so while being transported inside a vehicle, an infantry squad or team cannot open fire. They must disembark first. A unit with the artillery spotter or mortar spotter or air spotter special rules may be given their relevant orders while still embarked. Because basically they're saying you can spot from inside the vehicle. I've looked through the rules and I've looked through the scenario books and I've looked through the army lists and the vehicle special rules in each of the army lists, uh, army campaign books, and I haven't found where it says the limit of what a vehicle can carry or what it can't carry. So I would think you would need to use a little common sense because this Jeep is probably not going to mount this entire squad. Not going to happen. But I would allow this Jeep to carry four men. So one of these stands with four guys in it, I would say yes, they could carry that. This tank, on the other hand, could probably carry an eight-man squad. Maybe even a ten-man squad. Maybe even a 12-man squad. Because they're not just riding on the back. They're hanging on the front, the back. They're on the top of the turret, the engine. They're everywhere on the tank. So I would allow a full squad, basically one unit, to mount one vehicle. Now, you would think that maybe a deuce and a half could carry an entire platoon, two or three squads, 30 men. I would allow that. Uh, it doesn't specifically say. Now, when you go to your army lists, it does say, uh, like, platoon headquarters mounted in a car. Or it'll say... Uh, squad mounted in half track okay that's great so those work out really well but like the machine gun team it says machine gun team mounted in one of the other vehicles that's kind of vague so just use your common sense if you know a carrying capacity of a vehicle i don't know like a white scout car could probably only carry about six additional men plus the driver and the and the machine gunner. Uh, a Jeep, you know, it's not going to carry a full squad of 12 guys. That's not going to happen. Uh, yeah, so transports withdraw. Any passenger vehicle can be given a special withdraw order. This is the same as the top speed order, allowing the vehicle to move twice its normal distance if the vehicle then ends its move within 10 inches of a table edge, right, it can be taken and removed from play. So basically what they're saying is your 
uh, half tracks or your trucks, specifically trucks, half tracks would probably stay in fight, but your truck drives in, drops off the troops, and then you give it a withdrawal order. It does a double move on its next order, obviously, on the next turn, and you move back. And if you get within 10 inches of a table edge, you can just pick that truck up because um, it's not going to serve any purpose. Or you could keep it in the battle because you're planning on using it for an additional redeployment. If that's the case, keep it on the table. But you risk it being destroyed. And whenever a unit is destroyed, that means your battle rating goes down. Uh, so by, by exiting them, you prevent your enemy from destroying it, causing your battle rating to go down. If you withdraw a unit off the table using the withdrawal order, they will not return in the course of that battle. Okay, tank riders. It was common practice for armored vehicles to carry infantry. Hey, it beats walking. They're referred to as tank riders, whether they're actually on a tank or not. They act just like other vehicle passengers, but are far more exposed. They can be targeted separately to the vehicle by fire or close assault, and thus can be pinned separately. Basically treat tank riders as if they're in the open unless the vehicle they're on is in cover, in which case they're also in cover. Now, when taking hits, they're always treated as being in soft cover. And we'll get into shooting in the shooting section. If the transporting tank is hit by enemy fire, then the tank riders are immediately disembarked. They don't hang around while tanks are being hit by tank rounds. They are marked as pinned. Okay, and they're marked, they are marked as pinned. Okay. If the vehicle they are riding is destroyed by the hit, then 1D3 tank riders are also killed and a morale check must be made. Okay. So, like I said, like this tank could mount up a, 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 a squad of guys and then it gets attacked by an anti-tank gun. If it's missed, no big deal. But if it's hit, then you disembark the troops. And remember, when you disembark infantry from a vehicle, it's within four inches of the vehicle. So you disembark them. And then if the vehicle was destroyed by that hit then roll a d3 and kill that many people from that squad. And that's pretty much it for movement. Okay, so let's do a real quick recap of movement. Infantry moves 5 is not slowed down by difficult ground or obstacles. It is affected by deadly ground. If, it, if your squad gets within an inch of a building... You can, not required, but you can immediately pick them up and put them inside. Basically, you get, they get an extra bonus inch to get inside. In deadly ground, you roll a die. This is for everybody, vehicles and infantry. You roll a die, and you subtract that from... I'm already recapping wrong. In deadly ground, you roll a d6, and that's how many inches they can move up to their maximum movement. And usually, if you roll a six, something special happens, like a mine goes off or casualties happen because you're going through a flooded area. Vehicles uh, have a cross-country move and an on-road move. To be able to use the on-road move, you have to start and finish on-road. When attempting to cross an obstacle, you roll a die and subtract it from your movement. 
to a minimum of one inch. If it prevents you from crossing the obstacle, you can move up to the obstacle and then use your second move to cross the obstacle, again, rolling a die uh, to, and reducing it from your movement and minimum one inch to cross over the obstacle. If you're reversing, it's done exactly the same way. You roll a die, reduce it from your movement, you go backwards. If you're crossing an obstacle or moving in difficult terrain, you roll a die for the terrain and you roll a die for the reverse. You subtract that total from your movement to a minimum of one inch. Cavalry moves eight and ten. Uh, horse drawn uh, moves a four and six. And bicycles move three and ten. And this is all on a chart that you should keep at your game. Manhandled guns, it's based on the size of the gun. Uh, Off-road, the best you can move is three inches. And on-road is four inches. And it just goes down from there. Cavalry, once per game, they can do a charge move of 12 inches. Aircraft has unlimited move. Every different type of vehicle has a different off-road and on-road movement allowance. Passengers, uh, transports. Transports, when they uh, drop off their troops, they can do what's called a withdrawal, and that means they get a double move towards a table edge, or you just move them any way you want. You just move them, and then if they get within 10 inches of a table edge, you can actually pick the transports up and put them back in the box, and they don't count against your battle rating. Uh, passengers do not fight from uh, while being transported. Uh, I do believe there is a special rule later on with Germans with half tracks. They can fight from the back of the half track, but that's a special rule that we'll talk about once we get into individual vehicles and their special rules. Tank riders, when you're mounted on a vehicle, if that vehicle comes under fire, uh, the riders will immediately, not it comes under fire, but it's hit. The tank riders will immediately disembark, uh, pinned, and if the vehicle was destroyed by that hit, then they take a D3 casualties. Um, the infantry can be shot at separately while being on a tank. They're considered an open terrain until you start taking hits, and then they're counted as in soft cover. Because um, shooting and hitting something is one thing. And then once you're hit, you get a saving throw. And being on the tank gives you soft cover. All right. Well, that is battle group movement. I hope that was pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy. Uh, hopefully, uh, you could pick that up you know, at a convention in like two minutes. All right, guys. Once you learn the order, okay, back up. Once you learn the order system, then movement and everything should be pretty, you know, it's it's pretty much all a D6. You either can move a D6 or you subtract a D6. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, now as before we close out, as a bonus rule, uh, there is something called overrunning deployed guns. Uh, given the size and weight of tanks. An effective way to destroy enemy guns is simply to run them over. So any tracked tank, assault gun, or other armored fighting vehicle, not half tracks or trucks, not jeeps, okay, you can attempt to overrun, damage, crush, deployed enemy gun. To do this, the tracked vehicle is issued a maneuver and a fire order, but the fire order is replaced by the overrun attack. Of course, the target gun 
may use any ambush order to get a last-ditch shot. That's if it has an ambush order. If the attacker... Okay. If the attacking tank reaches the gun, then the gun must make a cover save or be destroyed. And guns inside hardened defenses, such as bunkers, or if they're deployed inside a building, cannot be overrun. All right. Uh, again, thank you for coming out and watching this vehicle. His vehicle. Watching this video. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about shooting. Open fire. All right. I'll catch you next one.